Including my commuting time, I spend up to 12 hours a day inside of my taxi. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you everything I take inside of my taxi for a daily shift in the cab. Now, if you do like the look of any of these products you see, I'll include the links to all of these in the description down below. The first thing I bring into my cab is my Herschel day pack. And this is a backpack. I've had Herschel for many, many years. Um, I've actually still got a bag that I bought in 2013, I think. I now use it as my riding bag when I go out on my bike and it's still alive. So that for me was testament of how good a quality these bags are. I like good quality stuff that lasts. And the purpose of this bag is that this is just more so I don't have to be juggling so many items when I come from my house uh, into my taxi. So I can put everything in this bag, anything that doesn't sort of live in the cab. So inside of this bag is my lunchbox, of course. I usually have a sandwich, some fruit, nuts, things like that. Something else to uh, consider that I've got in here as well is this wonderful device. This is a Joseph Joseph cutlery set. I love Joseph Joseph stuff, but this is a real nice kind of silicon cutlery set because sometimes I have meals in my stove. Uh, but this is a very neatly, look at this, is a magnetic cutlery set. You get a knife, a fork, and a spoon. Um, so that I always keep in my bag. I don't always have meals in my stove, but if I, if I have anything that requires cutlery, I love this because it just goes straight back in that silicon pouch, just real handy to have. Inside my bag as well, I have a lot of water. Uh, a one litre water bottle and almost one litre this one. This one's a soda stream bottle. I love sparkling water, but I don't want to drink just entirely sparkling water, so I have this as well. Two litres of water uh, as a daily amount is really, I find, quite hard to get. So if I've got one litre of regular, one litre of sparkling, I can usually get two litres of water a day. Also in my day bag, I have uh, a Y food. These are really convenient if I've only bought lunch or if I've only brought a meal in the stove and this kind of fills in the gap. You know, if I get a bit hungry during the shift or sometimes when I start off my shift in town, I don't want to stop and grab a sandwich. So if I've got one of these, I can just guzzle one of these uh, on the go. This is the happy banana flavor. This video isn't sponsored by Wi-Fi today. I just drink a lot of this stuff. Also in here, I have a book, whatever book I may be reading. Um, I did used to keep these in the cab. The only issue is, is that I might get home and I might want to read before I go to bed. And if it's in the cab, I can't read it. Also, if I'm changing books, you know, I go through books like, you know, every, every week. This is a classic by Dale Carnegie, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Uh, really old stuff, but this is kind of stood the test of time and just kind of unique principles that uh, are just, just good, valuable life books, really. So um, that's also in my bag. I've then also got uh, coffee. So this is a coffee pod. I've not filled this up today. You might have seen from some of my other videos that I love coffee. I've got a uh, Sage Barista Express machine at home. And I've found since having that Sage Barista Express machine, I generally don't buy coffees out anymore. Yes, it's an expensive machine at 500 pounds or so. And it's probably more of a hobby than you know having convenient coffee because to grind the beans, to steam the milk and extract the espresso and stuff is quite technical. And for the average sort of coffee consumer, they just want coffee quickly. I like the process of making coffee. And I'll bring this drinks pod out, which I love the size of this because by the time you put your espresso in there and then put uh, a bit of milk in there, it's about 150 mil in total, uh, but that is, I like this because it's it's sealable, so it's not gonna leak in my bag. I can chuck it in the bag in no matter what direction. I have no need for a giant thermos flask because once I've got an espresso in there, that's gonna be strong enough for my needs. I'll also bring out a, um, a keep cup, keep cup of equivalent sort of size. This is coffee that's kind of ready to go. So to start my shift off, I'll bring this out. If you buy them from their website, you can customize all the different colors. And this is ideal if I wanna drink fairly immediately, i.e. now. So that's an essential. You'll probably always see that sat in my little center partition there. Anything else in my bag? And of course, the cab bag itself. Another Herschel product. This is kind of one of those little, um, I suppose, stereotypes of being a cabbie in that every cabbie generally has a cab bag. Um, in years gone by, this kind of functions as a money bag. Maybe you can store receipts in there. It's kind of like your business bag. So I've got a, uh, a money holder. I like this. This just sorts uh, my money out so I don't have to sift through finding change and stuff. This is kind of heavy actually, so maybe I should change that. This is cool, like a milkman's wallet thing. I store some of my receipts and stuff in there. Uh, a bit of cash as well. Obviously my float now 
is is quite a lot smaller than when I first started driving a taxi because you know there's less and less cash about. So the need for this bag is probably becoming more and more irrelevant. People used to break into cabs and steal these bags, but it's probably a pointless exercise now because more stuff is becoming card, which is great news for us because people are less likely to jack these bags because there's hardly any money in them to be fair anyway. So that is my taxi badge, my guiding badge on the top there as well. Just so when I'm not working, it all goes inside that bag. I know where it is, I'm less likely to lose it. I've got a guiding badge in there as well. So sometimes when I do tours and things, I'll wear my super fancy guiding badge. And also we have to have a bill. We have to carry this at all times when we're working in the taxi. If we don't have our badge and bill, then we can get a stop notice from TfL. So basically a police officer uh, or TfL can pull us over and then ask to see our badge and bill. It's what's being called badge and build. And basically it's like, it's kind of like your driving license, but for taxiing really. They just check it, make sure it's valid because of course it could have been expired. Uh, all sorts, but you've always got to carry this on you in conjunction with the badge. Um, not one is exchangeable for the other, you have to have both of them. So that's your cab bag, and uh, I keep that in a secret location because even though there's not much money in there, I don't want to tell anyone where I keep that inside the cab. So that's what I've brought into the cab, but I do have some essentials that I always keep in the cab. Things like taxi receipts. So these are essential because many people, uh, City of London, maybe even the West End and that, will want a receipt for their taxi journey so they can claim it back on expenses. So if you don't have these, then your customers aren't gonna be very happy um, because a lot of people will get cabs on expenses, of course. Um, I've also got my Heathrow tag. Um, so it consists of two parts. You have the actual tag itself and then you have what's called a booster. The tag goes inside the booster. This is then what's able to be read by the, um, the scanners at Heathrow. You need this to be able to join the rank at Heathrow. They're not giving any of these out anymore. You have to pay to get one of these, but because Heathrow was once oversubscribed, uh, they made it like a one in, one out system. So people had to give up these to, for new drivers to get these. I got this once I got out. It just means that if I ever go to Heathrow, I have to use this. You can't join the Heathrow rank without one of these boosters. Um, so it's only an essential when I'm going out to Heathrow. Um, some other things, so in my pockets, I'll have um, my cab keys, of course. This LEBC TXE is keyless, which is fantastic. So I can just unlock, jump in the cab, just dump the key somewhere and drive. Wallet, this is an advert for Herschel, isn't it? I mean, I've got a Herschel wallet as well. I quite like slim wallets. Um, I've got, you know, opportunities to store some cash and things in there. Um, yeah, Herschel wallet, because their stuff lasts. Bit of cash and AirPods. These are fantastic. I love AirPods. Um, I use it when I'm editing at home, you know, when I'm in the gym. These are just great all round bits. These are the AirPods Pro. They're just great because if I'm like, you know, on Bluetooth in the cab and then I go out and go for a walk or whatever, I can just pop these in and just carry on my conversation. I've also got these in a uh, this black silicon case. I'm not usually one for cases, but having owned a set of these before, the white outside can get really scratched up, that white sort of finish there. Also, these are quite stealth when you make them in this black sort of case, meaning that if I accidentally do leave them in the taxi, they look kind of, you know, just quite subtle, just resting there, rather than that shiny white, I'm Apple, please nick me look. I generally don't make a habit of leaving them in my taxi in case you're getting any ideas, but that just does make them look a little bit more stealth. I've also got this Nokia brick sort of thing I have to carry in the cab now. Um, this is my payment device. I have now switched to a company called Curb. Now before Curb, I was using a payment system called CMT and they're quite reliable, but so damn expensive. CMT charge 3.75% plus 20 pence for every single transaction in the cab. Meaning that if I had a 10 pound fare, it's around 57p in credit card charges. Now you might think, Tom, 57p is nothing. What are you complaining about? but that's per transaction. So if I do 15 jobs in a day, we're talking about eight pounds just in processing fees. Then do that across the week, that's around 40 pounds. So then you can soon see across the year that really adds up. I did the sums and I worked out last year I was spending around 1,400 pounds just in credit card processing fees. I mean, that's a decent holiday, really. So I opted for something different. So I've gone for this curb system 
somehow it's TFL approved, despite being this weird janky app on a phone that I have to sort of turn on manually and have on this weird little cradle here, but it works. It's cheaper, it's about 1.7% on most cards and uh, American Express is a bit more. You know, anything to get those fees down really. I'm not sponsored by Curb nor CMT. I've only just had this Curb system fitted, but it seems okay so far. That's something else I've got to bring in the cab every time. I've also got my own business cards. Um, so these are handy if anyone says, hey, can I take your number, you know, maybe get yourself some regular airport work, tour work, whatever. Those are really handy. A fidget cube. Sometimes when I'm just in traffic, I just need to kind of do something. Uh, so this has got multiple little buttons, tactile things. I am definitely a fidgeter. I'm one of those people that likes to go for a pace if I'm on the phone. Uh, so being able to fidget inside of a cab is brilliant. I love that rocker switch. I have lip balm. I find that the heating or air conditioning can really dry out my face, it can dry out my lips, so that is an essential. A note checker. These are a couple of quid, so really they're worth their weight in gold if, they, if you can find a fake note. Um, I've only had a fake note a couple of times in the taxi, and every time I've had a fake note, I've managed to spot it. And I put this down to the fact that I worked heavily within retail and hospitality, so I was able to kind of check money quite frequently as people were paying. Other things include my phone, and that's for things like cabbies mate. Sometimes I use Google Maps. I know, shock horror, Google Maps. Um, if I'm doing long journeys across town and I wanna see the condition of traffic, uh, that's an essential in many ways as well, I guess. Other things fitted inside the taxi, we've got my meter, I've got a interior rag, really nice soft rag here, just for being able to quickly dust around any dust or mess inside the taxi, maybe if I spill coffee. I've also got sunglasses. These are Polaroid sunglasses. Polaroids are fantastic because to get polarized lenses from say Ray-Ban, you gotta pay like 120 quid for a set of glasses. These are 40 quid for polarized and they just help reduce a bit of glare whilst you're driving. And they look pretty cool as well. I mean, that's almost an essential. I've had times where I've gone out about sunglasses before and I'm like, help. I've also got nighttime driving glasses. I don't use these as much anymore, but sometimes when you get eye strain at night. Well, that was a load of good, wasn't it? So I don't use nighttime driving glasses anymore. Effectively, these are orangey lenses. They actually make everything look really bright. Uh, but the idea is, is um, the orange takes away the, the, the harsh white light. These are actually for using on a computer. And because obviously a lot of headlights, traffic lights and stuff are LED now, this just takes the edge off them. So I find I, I'd get less headaches at night wearing these. Although I'm gonna have to buy another pair now because I've just broken these, lovely. Right, so that's kind of cockpit area done. I've got a bit of change up front here. Uh, if ever I'm picking up at Heathrow Airport, I need to put some uh, money in the machine, feed the machine. Also got a uh, Logitech keys to go. This is brilliant because look how thin this is. Some days I do bring my laptop out, so I'll, I'll type on my laptop and stuff, but this keys to go is fantastic because it's just better than just typing on the phone really. So if I'm at Heathrow Airport, um, City Airport, any of those kind of ranks, this is fantastic to type on. It's just so much more efficient. Uh, this, now you can't probably buy this on Amazon, but you've probably got some of this kicking around at home or maybe get it from a builder's merchant or whatever. Pipe lagging. Why do I use this? There's a fantastic gap here in between the driver's seat and goes down into Nowheresville. And down in that gap, there's like a hole, there's a void and stuff gets trapped down there. I've heard of drivers losing AirPods down there. I've heard of drivers losing money down there. I've probably lost about a fiver down there, I'd say. You can get more uh, stylish versions of these online. You can get like uh, foam ones, you can get leveret ones, you can get ones that actually double up as a pocket. Uh, I'll link to some of those on Amazon. But this is pretty effective for me. It's um, it's not nice, maybe I should make it a nicer color, but um, it just fills that void. Look at that, a 60,000 pound vehicle, and I've got a bit of pipe lagging. <laughs> I've got this. This is my laptop steering wheel tray. Some of you might have seen this before. Still a good bit in the cab. I always keep it in the cab because there's there's actually behind this seat, there is like a, um, a little pocket. Uh, I didn't even know that pocket existed until about two years of owning this cab. And it's just handy for putting stuff like this because it's a bit big and chunky to put anywhere else really. So I can put it behind there and I won't use it often, 
you know, maybe someone's from another Heathrow Airport, you know, maybe a couple of times a month I might use this. So one side you can put your dinner on it, there's a little cup holder there, and you flip it over and it's a bit more flatter, and that is for putting a laptop there. That goes there, and you get your laptop out and whatever, or your keyboard, and you type away. Look at that! Whenever I do use it, it's just a real nice convenient because it's just it's just a, a much nicer angle. There's different versions of this, but I find this does the job. And uh, in this taxi, you do get um, some door pockets as well. Uh, I've got one down on this side for some more essential stuff and non-essential stuff I put over in the passenger side. Of course, in these taxis, there is no front seat. Um, but yeah, non-essential stuff I'll put over there. Things like uh, receipt rolls, uh, spare receipt pads and things. I don't always need to get to them um, if they're just spares. It's just a nice place to store them over there out the way. Uh, with all that done, let's go and have a look in the boot, what I've got in there. Let's check out the boot. Yeah, tiny, tiny boot on these. Um, we've got me a spare wheel, of course. Uh, I've got me a nice, uh, cheapy Amazon tire inflator because I found that I was spending too much money on inflating my tires at the garages and stuff. So, you know, this takes a while, I suppose, to get your money back on it, I suppose. But yeah, super convenient. I can always uh, pump up my tires uh, wherever I am. This is my pre-mixed quick detailer. Um, I pre-mix it because it just works out a bit cheaper. That's me being resourceful for you. So this is the best glass cleaner you can get. Doesn't leave any streaks behind. Wet and black tire dressing, you know, make your tires nice and black. Stiff hand brush. This is really good, quick, convenient and easy for being able to just quickly brush out inside of the taxi. It's not in there today, but I sometimes keep my Black & Decker Hoover in there as well. These things are wicked. Look at that. It's... You might have seen this in a previous video of mine when I got my rear window smashed. And I actually used this to pick up all the glass. It's so effective. Highly recommend this. This is great for around the house. It charges at home, so I can't leave it in the cab for too long. But I will put it back in the cab every now and again just because it's you know handy to have just to be able to quickly give a quick once over the cab. Essential on these cabs is a decent wheel brace. These have got 17mm uh, nuts on these and this is just a decent length one with a decent socket um, because the one that comes with this is not very good, there's not much leverage. So yep, that and I've also changed the uh, wheel nuts on this taxi for a deeper head. It just means if I'm stuck by the roadside I'm going to have more luck getting the wheels off. So that's it, this is everything I keep inside of my taxi that I use to varying degrees when I conduct my work in the capital. If you've enjoyed this video, then I'd highly recommend checking out my Heathrow Airport video. It's a video where I rank at Heathrow Airport so you can see a little bit more into that system, but also I actually use many of the products featured in this video over in that video. And if you want a little bit more, then I'd highly recommend subscribing to my weekly email update. See you all again soon, bye bye.